What's going on people? Uh, today in this video I'm going to show you how I made my negative shim for my flyboard and also I'm going to test it towards the end of the video and show how it uh, 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 performed. And you might be asking why should I need, why is the benefit of having a uh, negative shim? And for that I'm going to explain using my foil board. Now if you're an expert uh, and if you've been uh, uh, floating for a while, you know what I'm talking about. But if you're a beginner, hang in there so you can understand. This is my wing foiling board. I do wing foiling, I also do surf foiling. So, with these boards, uh, with any foiling, what you want to do is to keep your back foot on the top of that mast as much as possible. Why? Because if you have your weight and your, uh, your foot weight right on top of that mast, your balance, balance is going to be much more stable in control because all the turn is going to be done by the foot on the top of the foil. Now, with a regular uh, a foil board like this one, you can adjust the mast, the position of the mast. So there's a two tracks over here, and you can move the mast forward or backward to put the mast exactly what you want on the board to be right beneath your foot. Now, however, on a... Uh, uh, electric foil or any electric foil you cannot move that mast and it doesn't matter if you could or not because the torque comes from the propeller and no matter how you move that mast up and down the torque always gonna make the board nose up a little bit so with that said flyboard has several shims the only problem with flyboard has the uh, shim uh, the, the shims zero one, positive one, positive two, positive three, and positive four. And that's why they recommend you to start with a higher shim. Why? Because the higher shim, three, two, and one, will bring the nose up, making the board slower and more stable. Now, as you progress and get better, they tell you to bring to the, uh, to the, uh, the shim zero, and that's most people do. But even though, so as you bring to the, to the shim zero, the board is going to be on a zero level, it's going to be uh, on a flat position. But it doesn't matter, as you get better and better with flyboard, and as you move faster and faster, that tail always is going to have the torque, and it's going to bring the nose up. I find myself at a speed of 12 to 13, to have to move my foot all the way forward. So, as you go faster, even on a shim zero, you're gonna find yourself moving forward on the board as much as possible out of the nose. I've seen people riding, running through the nose. And what happens to that? That means your center of gravity is right here now, not on top of the mast. You can still have some control. However, uh, your yaw movement, which is left and right, banging left and right, it's gonna be very out of balance. So by making a, uh, having a negative shim, what it does is gonna bring that nose down. So as you go faster, rather than going up, the nose is going to be slightly stable. And that's the theory behind it. Now, I uh, called uh, uh, Flyboard and I asked uh, 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 Rudy, I think. Rudy is the representative for the United States, uh, Flyboard in the United States. Really cool guy. He gave me good news. He said that Flyboard will be making negative shims for the market. And they're also in the future are gonna make printable, meaning you can scan, you can download the printable version on a 3D printer. But until then, I took up on my own to make my own shim. I hope you guys are patient enough, and now I'm gonna show up make that shim so you guys check it out. So this is what you're gonna need on your hardware store. So my first prototype I made with a washer. The only problem with the washer is that the, shape, the size is good, but the only problem is that as you make and you shape it, on the tail end of it, it does not lock. So I need to come at least far as here so this does not move left and right. I still have to drill a hole over here. But the problem is that it is not long enough so this doesn't move left and right. So that's why I'm getting the, now I'm getting a, a, a aluminum rod because uh, I can make any length that I want. So I can make up to here or even up to there if I want. However, I'm gonna keep only up to here halfway. And also aluminum is, uh, it's easier to work with. However, I'm gonna have to make much more cuts on that that I could do on this, but it's your choice. Either way, we work. Now I have my raw piece of raw piece of aluminum right there. 
and I cut the size um, up to about there. The only tools that you're really gonna need for this is um, it's a grinder. You're gonna need a, a grinder itself in a diamond cutter, right? But usually gonna shape with this on the grinder. Almost there. You gotta cut the middle there's lot there right now so I can put this in and trim it correct to the size over there. Yep, there we go. And now that doesn't let it turn around, doesn't let it turn sideways. There you go, I just gotta finish it up now. Now, if you ask me, that's a pretty good match right there. So, I'm just gonna have to sand it down with a very fine paper to get all the details. And the only thing I gotta do right now, it's make a hole right there. It's almost done, so now here comes a very delicate part of this whole thing. So for the fact that this shim is gonna be seated between the fuselage and this, you can't just put it out there. So you gotta have a slightly angle to go up like that. So I have to do it now is shave on the top of here to make a slightly angle going up. So we have to simulate something like that. And there you go, as you can see now, there's a little slope over here going up until it gets flat. That slope over there is important. I think I did a good job trying to match both sides the same way. It doesn't matter that much because as long as the back is flat, is what's gonna give the right angle. And I finished the whole thing with this there very fine uh, sandpaper, uh, 20, 2200. And that's it. I think it's pretty much smooth. I got flat in the bottom and the angle over there. And um, so this is the zero shim. And this is going to go beneath it like that. And hopefully it's going to be a good fit. Perfect fit. It goes from that slightly angle and goes up to the end it lifts the tail a little bit up so it, no gaps it's nice and flat and it's not bad so ready to put this in the water and see how it's gonna respond yay my test run i'm gonna do without a shim just stabilize to find out the flat line to see if there's gonna be any difference or not but so you know i'm running the 1100 flow on the front with a 245 stab on the back so right now it's going to be uh, just no shim with the zero shim to see the elevation, uh, how it's going to be. And I'm going to try to run a cruise at eight, nine to see how the speed is going to bring up as a baseline. Uh, and luckily the water is nice and flat, so it's going to give a good a baseline. And then they're going to change to the shim that I made, okay? And I think uh, my shim, I didn't calculate, but I think my shim is not that big. And I think it's just about 0.50 to 0.75 minus 0.75 so it's not even a minus one but we're gonna see what happens on the baseline all right as i said i'm riding the uh flow 1100 with the 245 stab on the back at zero shim right now so i'm gonna crank up at about nine that's a pretty fast speed for me for my weight and to see how much the nose is gonna lift all right so this is uh zero shim and nine on the flow.
So that was at 10, and I felt the lift going up and up, and I didn't move forward. But I hope you can see where my foot was, and uh, I'm gonna ride right now on the other one. Now let's switch the shim, and as you can see, it's probably, I think, I think about 0 0.75, 0 0.50 negative lift. And see what's gonna happen right now. See how the ride is gonna be. Huge, huge difference. As I saw, I'm stepping way much back on the on the board. I was on top of the mat. Now I hope over here that looking at the view side by side you notice that I'm about half a foot back close to the mast on the right video and that's with a negative shim. Now what that translates into it? Basically as I said the closer you are to the mast the more stable you're gonna be on the board. Now I know we probably didn't look that very impressive however I only have about half an hour to get used to the shim uh, left on my battery but I can tell you this on the carving turns usually on the zero shim as you're making a turn the nose wants to lift on this it stays super super stable and also the response that you have it's much faster than you have on the zero shim but one thing that we liked about the negative shim is as you go up on speed, the nose doesn't go up as much. It feels like it stabilizes itself, meaning as you gain power and torque from the propeller, the negative shim wants to bring the nose down rather than up. So it stays nice and stable, simply amazing. Now let's face it, I made this out of a piece of junk in my backyard, guys. And I just hope the flyboard is gonna get into and make some cool sets of negative shims so you can choose from. Because this little piece of crap that I made was awesome. I just got out of the water right now and I have to admit that I'm pleasant surprised and stoked for the fact that the piece of crap aluminum that I shaved into shape actually worked. And that was without even major crazy measurements. So I have a, I have a, a request. In case if you are a tech guy who happens to have a printer, a 3D printer, and a scanner at home, uh, or access to one, let me know. I will ship you the original flyboard zero shim and also a positive uh, shim so you can scan it and make me a negative 0 0.50, 0 0.75, and a 0 01 shim uh, to, t to find out which one's gonna be better. And of course, I'll pay it for you. And if you have the skills, let me know. I'll pay, gladly pay for you to make those shims for me. Uh, and rather than waiting for a uh, flyboard to make one, because they do work. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, give the thumbs up. Leave the comments below. Be good to each other. And I'll see you guys in the water again. Take care.